Hello, I'm Nigel Griffiths. In this series of Power VC Movies Part 2, we're looking at the quick look around the Power VC graphical user interface. So let's start our quick tour by logging in. I won't delete any sections from this movie so you can see the full speed of this thing. So uh, there we are, nice and quick, we've got in. We have a quick summary of our machines, our storage and our networks we have here. We can see we have six machines connected at the moment. This, uh, if we hover over here, we can see reserved and using. Using is the power VC. Reserved is the LPARs and uh, virtual IO servers that uh, are not in direct control of uh, power VC, so that they are already there. We can see the memory here as well. How much of the combined memory we have across all the machines and the virtual machines we have up to 400 in uh, standard edition so we're running using 9 so it's a tiny percentage similar sort of things with our storage providers uh, these are our disks, I've got two V7000s and we have uh, one sand fabric connecting those at the moment we have two networks let's have a little look round in here I uh, want to first start I thought well how do I actually log off well, intuitively I said well let's have a look at underneath here and there it is the logout button under here, the question mark, we have help. This gives us a, a page that comes up that gives us the help information for PowerVC. It's actually driven off the local machine, so if you haven't got internet access in your computer room, uh, that will still work. About does as you expect. We can see here this is 1.2 uh, with the first service pack installed. We can actually see the date of this. This was December the 1st. Uh, for the first service pack, this was uh, came out December the 2nd. We also look up in here, we've got check for updates. So if I click on that, it'll just take you to this page in here in Fix Central. This is nice because it's already pre predefined that it's in other software, PowerVC, so you don't have to go around trying to find this thing. You put in your version here, it'll tell you what fixes and updates are available. Back to PowerVC. Along here, if uh, something goes wrong, we'll find uh, the messages appear here. These are actually in the uh, log files on the machine itself. But this tells us uh, what's going on. Quite often we kick something off and then it will report here later whether it worked or not. If we look at the users, these are the users I've defined. Root isn't a good user to have defined. It is by default. Uh, I guess we'll take that one out. All we have to do is look at these user groups. If we look in etc group, I will find admin, deployer, and viewer. This way, I get uh, everything. This guy cannot change anything apart from deploying new virtual machines, and the viewer uh, can't do uh, anything that changes anything in PowerVC. Was a bit worried when I first came across this because it looks like you can get to everything. When you, if you get to the position where you can actually click the button to actually action something, is at that point it says you don't have the required authority to do this. Quite nice because then the viewer can actually see all the parts of PowerVC and they can't actually still make a change though. Good for letting somebody have a, a look around and learn about it without doing any damage. In the configuration side of things we have the placement of the virtual machines. There's two in this version. We expect more in later versions so we do striping which means put the virtual machines across all the machines in turn and go round and round robin style um, or fill up one machine until you go on to the next uh, as it fills up. Down in here there's some more advanced features. These uh, storage uh, connectivity groups allows us to group our disks for perhaps two sets of disks for production and dev test or something like that. These are more advanced features so we'll dodge those for now. Uh, the compute templates are particularly quite good. When we actually deploy a virtual machine it uh, gives us templates of small, medium and large and we have a, a group of them here. These ones that start M1 are the default set. We can see the number of CPUs this is the uh, virtual processor number. Then we have the amount of memory it will assign and the amount of disk space it will go for. You can, of course, uh, define some more of these. I've done these for database uh, medium and large in here, but we can quickly uh, create one. We'll give it a name. We'll just uh, use demo. We'll see this come up in a, a little bit later on. I don't know, we might say um, virtual processor count of uh, eight and a entitlement of six uh, memory it does have to be a multiple of the uh, LMB the logical memory block size and um, on disk size we can just give it a, a rough disk space further down in here then we have compatibility modes if we have uh, lots of machines being managed by PowerVC and say they're all Power 6 machines apart from one Power 7 machine if we want to maintain live partition ability 
um, across them then we could say the default is power 6 so that will run on a, a later model machine even though it won't benefit from the extra features. If we go into advanced mode then we have the minimum maximums that we're more familiar with with doing things on the uh, HMC. Let's go back to the uh, the basics. It gives me a warning up here if you typed in those extra boxes that will get removed. But uh, we're back here and we'll just put the 6 back in here and we can add that new template. So that's the demo one, we'll see that later on. If we click this button here, this is the home, this gets back to our main panel. We can click these plus buttons in here to add the resources or we can go down to the resources here. So if we have a very quick look down here. We have the, the uh, disk space that have been allocated. These are the images that we deploy into uh, virtual machines. If we look at the storage providers here on my two seven, uh, V7000s, uh, Tan and Dun, this is the name I've just given them so I can remember what's what, and this available disk space. Um, over here we have the sand fabric. We click these um, add uh, features in here, it will ask us some questions to log in and start managing those resources. For the network side we have two set up in here, static and DHCP. In here we have the uh, hosts. So these are the computers we're using. We have a slide bar down here to see some further ones. Um, and we've got, um, the way we connect these up is connect them to a HMC. And if I click on the particular HMC, you see as I go over the top, it gets an underline. This means there's more information if we click on this. If I click outside that, it, it just highlights that particular item and we can take operations against it. If I drill into that, we can see the HMCs. It says this HMC 12 is controlling these two machines. If I go into that green machine, I have more details of the machine. In later movies, we'll look at these details um, uh, more deeply. But the reason I went in here is you can see we're building up what's across the top in here, what is called a breadcrumb trail. Now, if we wanted to go back a level, we can either go back up one level or two levels back up to the top here and see that host in this way. And we could of course go back to the this one here for the host to actually get out of it as well. Um, here are my virtual machines and we can see again if I select one then I can take the particular operations uh, for it. Up in here we have the uh, images. Again if I click a particular image, this is just a base AX7 install, then once I've selected one I've, the options I can uh, have for that up here. If I deploy, you'll see this is going to say, OK, you want to set up a virtual machine. We can see for our small setting in here, the default that the projector size is just half a CPU for the processing units. That's the entitlement. Um, if we select a larger template in here, extra large, takes us up to uh, 8 CPUs and entitlement of 4. And we can see the light brown in here is quite a bit bigger we can see how much of our remaining resources this is going to take. If we click again in here we can see the one that we just created, the uh, demo system. It's actually giving us a warning in here that the size of our LPAR must be a multiple of this LMB, the logical memory block size, 128. So the math doesn't quite work, so I should have put in here 96. Nice little feature here that we can actually save that into the template so that it's correct next time. We do have to put some other things in here to actually create our virtual machine before we actually hit the deploy. We'll show you that in a different movie. If we take the little home at the top, we go back to our home screen and we'll log out. That ends the look at the graphical user interface for PowerVC. Thank you for watching my movie. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like it. The best place to go for more information is tinyurl.com IBM PowerVC website. All the red books pretty good too.